Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. I am so excited to be back here this week to present another local artist here in Hawaii. Today, we have a vocalist who has been performing in Hawaii and abroad for years. She is a three times Hawaiian Music Awards winner and the winner of four Hoku Awards. She is an exciting and riveting internationally acclaimed singer and songwriter who has worked many years to become one of the world's most accomplished performers with over 10 CD releases to her name here and abroad. Her performance career is still in high gear, paying tribute to Sade, Natalie Cole, Roberta Flack, Prince, Chuck Mangion, with appearances at Blue Note Hawaii and Japan. A longtime Whitney Houston impersonator, she has traveled on the road internationally with the Legends in Concert. When she is not performing, she loves to give back to the community, working with different fundraisers, such as the March of Dimes, Make Them Smile, and more. Let's welcome Janai to the show. <laughs> welcome. Oh. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. My was, eyes were starting to cross, oh, really? <laughs> but I really, I, it, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it, when you hear people reciting what it is that you've yes. done over the course of your years, and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a little nerve-wracking too, and some people would call it bragging, right? But it isn't bragging you've worked if you've hard done it. it. <laughs> you've worked hard for it, and you deserve, you deserve all the accolades. So let's get started here. How did you get started in music? I've been at it since I was about eight years old. And wow. um, my mother encouraged me to sing at parties and things like that. So I kind of started getting used to the idea of letting it rip especially in intimate situations around parties and stuff. Then I entered my first talent contest when I was 12, and I won <laughs> singing a Roberta Flack tune, right? I put uh -huh. on an afro, and I did my best. Now, back then, we didn't have karaoke, karaoke. So we had the only thing that we could do was, you know, put the 45 on the record player and sing along to it. So everyone, of course, thought that you were just lip syncing, but mm -hmm. that's not the case, is it? I was actually singing into the microphone loud enough to be heard over Roberta Flack's recording on the record. So and you just got the attention of everybody. Yeah, and I just did it. I just did it just like that. And so then it just continued on after that. Well, when did you, be, when did you turn professional? Well, while I was in high school, I was involved in a lot of drama club activities. And one of the shows that we did um, called Nostalgia was a show that was based around hits, rock and roll hits from the 19... 50s and 60s and so we we bopped around the different high schools doing that and then all of a sudden that show got booked to do something where we actually got paid and next thing I know I'm auditioning when I'm 16 years old for a uh, for a dance band that was playing at the Ebony Club it was a exclusive club called Ebony sorry, sorry about touching your stuff there Rich <laughs> um, so that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. It was fun. It was fun. I, I, I started working those nightclubs, and my mom would have to come along with me, you know, because I was too young to be out there. Wow. So you know what it's like when these uh, these these young stars, I should say, today, what they what they go through. Right. But the good news for them is they have so much more uh, to to access. They mm -hmm. have. You know, they have the internet, they have TV, they have, it's, it's, it's amazing what they have, all these contests and all these great platforms. Social media has been a really great addition to any singer's life. And um, as up there as I am in generations compared to them, I was able to, you know, make that transition just like you, Miss Gwen, and uh -huh. how we had to, you know, <laughs> learn how to do the smartphones and learn yeah, how to do yeah. social media and you know, without leaning over to the kids and the grandkids and going, oh, hey, how do you do this? Oh, hey, exactly. hi. How do you do this? How, how does this work? <laughs> oh, Grandma. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, as I stated earlier, you've traveled all around the world. How did that come about? Hmm. Okay. So after I graduated from high school, I just couldn't stay here. It was too small for me back then. I'm from Waianae, okay? So, uh, you know, you blink, you miss it. 
in my mind. So I had to get on a plane and, and get on out of here. So I started touring with my boyfriend at the time, who was a keyboard player for a band called Freshwood. Don't talk to me about the name of that. Please don't ask me that question. <laughs> anyway, um, we toured around and uh, got busy. I, and I was just the, the, the girlfriend and the wife and the groupie, you know what I mean? So I was just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for my chance to, to really start touring. And then when we finally settled down in the Bay Area, I was able to really sink in and, and do duo work. That was like my introduction to making it, m making a go of it. And so when I was forced to come home to Hawaii, because girl, I came for a visit one day, mm -hmm. and uh, some criminals took everything out of the back of my car, oh, and no. they left me with panties and shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I had to work at a Korean bar to get enough money to buy clothes, and then right after that, I was I uh, auditioned for another band. So, speed up, speed forward. I was performing at Nick's Fish Market mm. one night, and lines were out the door because I'm the sidekick to Norm Compton. Hey, Norm, how you doing? Hey, mm. Norm, hi. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, I was a sidekick to Norm Compton, and in walks the famous rock and roll singer, band leader, Paul Revere, of Paul Revere and the Raiders. And he sees me in all my glory, and he goes, you know, you would make a really good Whitney Houston. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I auditioned, I, I went out and bought a wig, I, I had a dress custom made and I had some tracks and everything, and, and there I was, performing for Legends and Legends in Concert. That's really, go ahead and say that three times really fast. Legends in Concert. And they sent me all over the world. As Whitney Houston. As Whitney Houston. And so wow. while I was all over the world, I would just go ahead and step into nightclubs and sit in right? Because mm -hmm. that's what we do. We go and we, we sit in and we say, hey, can I come and sing a song with you? And so next thing you know, I, I'm, I'm doing all of that. Wherever I go, wherever I went, that's what I did. So uh, not only was I helping to build the Whitney Houston brand and the mm -hmm. Legends and Concert brand, but I was also, you know, building up me. Building your own brand. Yeah, building my own brand. Now, did you ever get a chance to meet Whitney? No, unfortunately, girl, I did not. No. Um, I remember someone asking me once, hey, why don't you just go to Whitney Houston and ask her if she can give you some of her old costumes? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> How am I going to do that? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I got scared when, I, when someone asked me that, and I, and I just kind of went, hmm. Why would Whitney want to lend me some of her old clothes? Think mm. about it for just a minute, okay? <laughs> so it could have gone either way. I heard she was really um, very professional, very nice, mm -hmm. very sweet. But then you read all those things in the paper and you just kind of go, oh, I don't want to go. Nope, not going to do it. So I just had to fake it. You know, I just had to fake her style and her class and her look and everything. And I, I did okay. From some of the pictures I've seen, you look like just like her, really. Yeah, well, excuse me for what I'm about to say, but that's when I was like crackhead skinny. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> no, and everyone thought that I was, you know, one of those, and I'm like, mm-mm, God gave me this. So, <laughs> so, and I don't know where this came from, but that's okay. <laughs> now tell me, um, I just found this out recently myself with uh -huh. you that you were with Dream Girls and Jennifer Holliday. Okay. How did that come about? All right. Well, I was in Dream Girls twice. Mm -hmm. In 1989, I was uh, tapped to play the part of, of uh, Laurel. Okay. And it was a local cast. So, it, and it was um, uh, produced by Tommy Aguilar, who was a very well-known dancer, choreographer, and so he was, he was really trying to, to continue on his legacy by producing this show, and boy did he take on something huge and major. And the thing about it was, is there weren't enough 
black people in Hawaii to really fill the roles. He couldn't find anybody back mm -hmm. then that was, uh, was going to do it. So what he did was he localized it. So some of us were and some of us weren't. And that's okay because, mm -hmm. you know, you're allowed that kind of license with it. It was a huge production. It starred myself, Desiree Cruz, who is John Cruz's sister, mm. and all those other Cruises that are out there. I, I love you. <laughs> um, it also starred Loretta Oblis, who took over for Star Williams, because Star Williams just couldn't do the choreography and just didn't want to keep up with the rigorous rehearsals that were, re that were required mm -hmm. to do the show. So they replaced her with Loretta Oblis, and that girl took off. You know who I'm talking about, mm -hmm. right? I do. Yeah, Loretta I do. Sells, uh, sire. So um, that was number one. Oh, beautiful. The costuming, the, the choreography, the, the stage, everything moving around on stage. It was really fantastic. So let's fast forward to 2002. 2002. I was newly married. And my brother, who is an amazing bass player over in Brooklyn, New York, he's played with Hugh Masekela, Pat Mart Martini, um, I'm sorry, Mar Pat Martino, sorry, sorry, <laughs> um, Michael Franks. Mm. I mean, some really big wigs. He was also the bass player for Jennifer Holiday. And, wow. he, and he happened to mention to her that, uh, hey, my sister's a singer, and you know, I'd really love it if you could help her audition for the gig. And uh, I flew myself over and I auditioned for Jennifer Holiday in New York. And what was coming up was she was, she was uh, doing the show for the 20th anniversary of the Broadway hit, Dream Girls. I remember that. Yep. Yeah, and we did it at, uh, in that. Atlanta at Fox Theater. And we did a two week run. And for that show, I was given the role of Michelle Robinson. Wow. And so, but, but here's the thing, it was a smaller role, but mm -hmm. I didn't care. I did not care. I was on stage with Jennifer Holiday okay. and that amazing cast of characters. Girl, the costuming was that umpteenth level <laughs> stuff. And the wigs, mm -hmm. yikes. Now, I was never trained as a dancer. <laughs> so I had to really like hoof it. You had to I, learn it. I had to learn it and you know there were times when I you want me to do what? And okay, so there was a scene where we had we'll to We'll be right back. We have to we have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. All right, I don't go too anywhere. Much, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. I'm live at five every Wednesday, where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant, both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Welcome back to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. We are here today with Janai. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me back, sweetie. Thanks for having me, period. Oh, yes. I know that that dream, dream girl story was getting a little long in the tooth, but it was an amazing <laughs> experience, and Jennifer Holiday was just the sweetest person. Well, just the... Uh, you were just lucky to work with Jennifer Holiday. I was so lucky, so fortunate. Now, before we go on to some more questions that mm -hmm. I have for you, Will you play for us a little bit? Oh, I can. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm just going to do a real quick one, okay? Okay. Just something I, to tease the audiences for, you know, what they can see when they come see you. Well, 
I do so many different things. Uh, you do. This is just one of the little things. This is what I, I show up and I volunteer for cancer patients and kids and stuff like that. So I bring my trusty, crusty ukulele with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can do this. I've seen her play percussion. Yes, I have. She looks like Sheila E. when she does it, <laughs> when she's on her con. And then I can turn around and do... To know you, baby, oh, do 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 ba do ya do do. And when I see you, I just light up in blue. She's the smooth jazz connection, Hawaii smooth jazz lovers connection. <laughs> she is the jazz lover in paradise. Ah da 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 ba da ba. When you see her, make sure you stop to say hello. Gwendolyn, why smooth jazz connection? Wow. I just had a song made about me. Wow, today. Well, it, you know, that could hardly count as a song. But, but you know, that, I wanted you know, to make sure. I gave, I gave you something special. You, you know, to, thank to, you. I, thank you. Now that you just did that. All right. Why don't you tell us how you got connected with Blue Note Hawaii? Because you're there all the time. Well, given the fact that I I've, I've did the Blue Note nightclubs in Japan, mm -hmm. for the eight CDs that I have released there, um, that's all smooth jazz, by the way. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people here on the state side, you know, the, the, the record deal is kind of different, you know, stateside as compared to Japan. So... I rolled up on the good folks at the Blue Note, and I, I pretty much insisted that I be there as often as possible. I mean, and now the phone's starting to ring because they mm -hmm. realized that they needed, uh, they needed me. They needed local acts like me yes. to come along and show our quality. So um, that what you just heard, that's just me goofing off. But the thing is, I pride myself at being a, a premier jazz vocalist here in Hawaii. And I can hold my own out there internationally as well. No one would throw me uh, out of a club unless there was more room for an audience outside. Mm -hmm. So uh, Blue Note could not be in Hawaii without using artists such as myself and and uh, the Willie K's who can you know play all this. Uh, there, there's so many of us, and the good news is we're allowed to bring our Hawaiian variety of jazz, R&B, pop. Hawaiian, whatever it is that we've got going on, we can all present our wares there. Best staging, best light, mm -hmm. best sound, and best opportunity. So I, I have to tell you, over the last two years, I've been privileged to sing in, produce, co-produce 20 plus shows over the last wow. two years. Doing tributes like you mentioned earlier, yes. Sade, um, Natalie Cole. It's a lot of work, girl. It's like I, I imagine yeah. for those of you that have not seen any of Janai's tributes, the one that I really liked is the one that she did with the tribute to um, Prince. Can we bring that one up where she looks just like <laughs> Prince? <laughs> Wait, I gotta see this. I gotta she see was this doing the tribute to, Yeah, <laughs> she was doing the tribute to Prince, and I mean, it was just like she had so many different outfits during that show. But when she came out with this, I was like. Whoa, <laughs> But yes, yeah. um, Janai has, just, has done so many tributes. Prince, uh, Sade, Roberta Flack. And you have an upcoming one that you're about to do. Tell us about that. Right. So now I, I have a threesome coming up. I'm doing a, a series of shows called Divas of Jazz and R&B. This is volume two because volume one was... Um, uh, Sade, Natalie Cole, and, and Whitney Houston, because mm -hmm. she, you know, she did a few jazzy mm -hmm. things. So volume two is Anita Baker, Roberta Flack, and Tony Braxton. Wow, that's going to yeah, be so, nice. So I'm trying to do like an all-inclusive kind of a deal. And mm -hmm. the format is to invite young performers, singers, instrumentalists, you know, whatever I can get my hands on. Mm -hmm. But right now I've got two beautiful singers. I have 
uh, Kathy Baroga, who's been bouncing around here in Hawaii for a while, and she's a wonderfully accomplished uh, vocalist that, that men see her and they just start drooling because she's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's so classically beautiful and she can really sing. And I'm looking forward to having her on stage as we highlight the music of those three diva artists. And then I've got this vivacious, incredibly bubbly young lady by the name of Lyric Medeiros that's going to be joining us for a couple of songs. And uh, I share some of the wealth of experiences that I've had being on stage, producing, um, promo work, all that stuff. I, I try to offer what it is that I have and what I'm able to do to anyone who's interested in learning. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to that next step. Yep, that yeah. next step. I was so, going to get to that. So there, tell us about that next step. This is where I'm really going to focus in on offering um, uh, master classes. Because, I, I, you know, people ask me all the time, do you teach vocals? And I'm like, no, I'm not well suited for that because I know what my talents are and I know what I can and can't do. Oh, teaching other people's children how to sing is kind of not my forte. I'll leave that up to the amazing experts that are out there. So for me, however, I can do a performance master class because that's what I have to share. That's what I've, I've spent 40 plus years on stages all over the world learning how to perfect my own craft. So now I'm completely and totally willing to share. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be called, launching a platform called That Next Step for any budding performer. You don't have to be young. You can be, you can be out there already, but you want to really hone your craft and you want to make it better and you want to learn how to do more than what you're already able to do. Come talk to me because I would be so very happy to share with you what I know. See, yeah. you hear that? For anybody that's out there that wants to uh, come up in the business, see Janai. <laughs> See Janai. See Janai. Oh, thank now, you. Tell us about the date of your show that's coming up at Blue Note. So that show coming up is April seventh. We have two shows. We do six thirty and nine p.m. Uh, the tickets. There's a really nice come on a rate on this. So, for example, you can get a a table of six for two hundred and twelve dollars after taxes, right? So okay. that's pretty good. You know, you can you can treat the family to a night at the Blue Note and and I'm always reaching out to the audiences and trying to get them to uh, familiarize themselves with all of the great talent that's here in Hawaii. And I, mm -hmm. and I, I try to bring them as much of a, a variety as I can, not only in the music that I do, but in the music that I'm sharing with these right. other budding young performers. I keep saying young. It doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> Just bring it. You know, Take that next step. Take that next step with me. Now, one last thing. What is your formula for success? What can you tell some of our up-and-coming artists? Hmm. Uh, to sum it up in a nutshell, always smile and be happy with what it is that you're doing. And if you're not happy, sweetheart, get out and do something else. Don't let people tell you what to do. Do it on your own terms. And just be happy. Be good. <laughs> and be happy. And make other people happy. Because that's what my name means, you know, one who loves people. Really? Janai is Mandarin Chinese for one who loves people. And I really do. Wow. Um, I love them a lot. I try not to love them too little. But I, uh, that, that's the best word of advice that I give my kids and that I, that I give to anyone I see. Mm -hmm. Just be happy and, and be good to people. Help out. Be of service. Nice. That's what I do now. Well, Janai, I thank you so much for being on the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. And I hope that I've let everybody know a little bit about you because I've learned some new things about you that I did not know. Oh, thanks, sweetie. So Hawaii Smooth Jazz 
Connection. Connection. I did have that right. You did right? have it right. Okay. I, because, I have because I have different because I have different things going on. Jazz connection. You know. Hawaii smooth jazz connection. <laughs> with Gwendolyn Harris. Oh oh oh. Hawaii smooth jazz connection. Hawaii smooth See, once jazz you get connection. Her started, you can't stop. But I love it. I love it. I love it. But thank you again, Janai, for being here with My us. My pleasure. On the Hawaii Juice um, Smooth Jazz Connection. And thank you everyone for being here. Until next week, aloha.